Open School of Business. Today, I have a, an incredible duo of um, father and a son who are today <laughs> um, uh, coming to the show to talk about their game business. Uh, first off, uh, Toby uh, Madden, who would um, uh, introduce his business, how he got into this. I know you retired from a very uh, uh, prestigious, nice career. Uh, tell us how you got into gaming business. Okay, well, like you said, I had a long career as an economist at the Federal Reserve. And part of my role there was economic education. I was also an adjunct professor teaching economics at several uh, various universities in Minnesota. And after I retired, I was thinking, what can I do to further my mission? And my mission is for people to understand economics. And I've always had this long-term enthrallment with gaming. I'm a gamer. About half people in the United States are gamers. And I really enjoy gaming. And you can learn things from gaming. And so I try to take it to the next level where they could actually pass tests. Uh, you know, and actually pass a course by uh, gaming. And so I worked with my son, Christopher, who travels the world teaching English, as well as other things. And we kind of formed together to create some great educational games on economics. Two of them are puzzle games that are easily available, short games that you can play on your smartphone. Uh, it's called, one's called Demand and one's called Supply. And then we have another role-playing game, which is a lot more fun because it's a role-playing game versus a puzzle game. I'm more of a role-playing game type person. And it's a longer game too. It takes hours to play. But through the adventure that you play with Tarina, you learn a lot of economic concepts. And we're now working on developing more programs, uh, trying to bring supply and demand together in equilibrium, as well as other types of games related to economics. Christopher is also branching off and creating some other cool games as well. So that's what I'm really excited about. And that's what I've been doing. Mm, Very nice awesome. synopsis, Dad. I have to applaud you for that. Good job. <laughs> yeah. I um, First off, I would like uh, to deeply go into that economics area and ask you, how is that going to be different learning through a game than... Uh, just, you know, if you think about it, demand and supply is just one graph and one formula. Do we really need the whole game to really understand it? What's well, what your it does perspective is it, on it, that? It brings you into you're actually experiencing the concept rather than just looking at a graph and seeing what happens when the graph moves. You're actually trying to predict the future. And that's the great thing about economics is it allows you to predict the future. And with that, you're put into situations where what's going to happen to the future when something else happens. And that's the, um, the deeper understanding you get by playing the game because you're actually experiencing it through simulations. Yeah. Uh, would you recommend like um, application of the game being for people who are just students in economics, let's say, um, or is it a very hands-on and, and, and entrepreneurs can use it to uh, decide maybe on which <clears throat> kind of products will have more demand in the future, let's say. Well, actually entrepreneurship is one of our uh, key capital or our key resources that we teach in Pfeffer for Island that without entrepreneurs, you don't get new products and services. You don't get new things going on. So. And entrepreneurs really need to know about economics because it's really going to help them decide what businesses to do and how to, to further their business. So I, I would say it's a, a great deal of people. And many entrepreneurs might have already taken an economics course. And even if they have, they can get a good, um, good uh, better understanding of the concepts, which will help their businesses. And then Christopher is actually getting more direct involvement with entrepreneurs because He's developing a game that teaches about startups and not only just creating your company, but then how do you get make it to the next level? How do you scale it with financing and, and that type of thing? I think uh, it's really important to know uh, your audience before you start um, 
uh, start any kind of service uh, product, uh, in this case, the game, right? So when you started the game uh, of economics, uh, what was going through your mind? Uh, who was your target audience? Did you talk to them? Did you have a certain kind of a customer interaction to find out what features you, you need to have and how the game needs to work? Well, that's uh, a great question because in my mind, I was kind of gearing it towards gamers that were interested in business and economics. But we had to go through, I would say, 60 or 70 iterations with play testers and testing it with uh, high school students and testing it with other people around the world. And every time we every time we tested it, we realized we weren't exactly fitting what they wanted. So we kept on iterating and iterating and iterating. And um, it took us probably an extra four months of development and testing before we got it right and that we got an awesome product now because we did have that many iterations. So we decided to go with a rapid application development, which is you, you produce something and then you get feedback and then you tweak it and you tweak it and you tweak it and tweak it until you don't need to tweak it anymore. Right. Um, so who is your target audience in this case? Uh, so our target audience are people that like to play video games and that want to learn economics. And in that case, uh, seventh, eighth graders, high schoolers, college people, all are required to learn economics. So uh, yeah. that's kind of a built-in thing that they might not want to learn economics, but they're forced to learn economics. And then there's a whole group of people out there that just want to learn more about the economy and economics. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really great that you have that knowledge about your audience that they already have a requirement from their school. So it's just a tool for them to learn it in a more entertaining way, in a more um, easy way, let's say. And um, in terms of, you know, you just mentioned about Chris uh, de developing an um, entrepreneurial uh, game. Uh, so you are already in the entrepreneurial game yourself, right? So how did you approach mm -hmm. uh, your entrepreneurial journey? Uh, did you bootstrap? Did you uh, attract any kind of investor money? Um, or uh, what your, your approach and your plan for the future since you're branching out into different uh, games and, and uh, growing even further? So for me, I've started lots of businesses in my life and I love entrepreneurs. And whenever I see entrepreneurs out there, especially when they're first starting out, I love to help them out, you know, when I meet them or what have you. And this was a golden opportunity. COVID basically brought Christopher back to the United States and back into our household because uh, he was teaching around the world and COVID kind of shut that down for him. So he had some time to explore this opportunity of game development. And we did a lot of prep work and a lot of study. And I'm pretty much focused on economics, whereas Chris has lots of other interests. And what we both learned over the last 10, 11 months is that we've gained a lot of skills in how to develop video games. Then the, the next thing is, what type of video games do we want to produce? And so maybe Chris could start talking about the ones that he wants to produce. So. The game development studio originally was called Power Parametrics, an LLC my dad created. Um, I came on as a kind of developer, designer, marketer, kind of a fit all to try to build this team and get my dad's vision and also try to create a game, which was FIFA for Island, which is uh, the name comes from a childhood thing that I did. I built this imaginary island uh, on, a, on a notebook. I drew a map and I drew all these monsters and I couldn't say my name right because I had a speech impediment. Christopher, it was too difficult. I would say Fififer, Fififer. So that, that was Fififer Island. That explains Island. the name of yeah, the island, yeah, Fififer yeah. Island. That's how you pronounce it. If anybody's curious, it's Fififer. And uh, we, yeah, we built this cool game that we're proud to, to show off to people. Um, it's, it's great on the PC. And my dad's been doing these other mini games, uh, teaching the laws of demand and supply. And for me, it's like the marketing side. That's kind of where I excel. And like the whole time, I'm like, how do we 
get people to want to play this game. And in that journey, I kind of went off and I found these, this, these other people that really inspire me. And they're a group of entrepreneurs, um, business people who also started their own podcast. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called the All In Podcast with uh, like four billionaires. It's the number one tech podcast in the world. Chamath uh, Palahapitiya, David Sachs, David Freeberg, and Jason um, J. Kell. And so awesome. I just, I love their podcast and they're like talking about startups and how to fund and get, get funding. And it's really motivational too. Yeah. Um, so that kind of got me the idea to like, why not create a game that teaches how to start a startup from the beginning and kind of gear it more towards adults and entrepreneurial people and make it kind of fun or, or more like adult humor. I mean, not like dirty or anything, just kind of just more crash and, and play it off these characters. So I kind of like was a, it's like a fan game, but also teach, uh, teach about startups. And so also in this whole journey, so my dad's kind of passing the baton onto me as far as leading this uh, game development studio. And we're rebranding because fifth of her, nobody knows how to pronounce it at first. Power parametrics is too long, too difficult. So now the game studio is called Good Future. Good Future, educational games and media. And that's, uh, I'm going to be rolling out the rebranding today, hopefully, if I get time, otherwise tomorrow. Um, and there's a lot more exciting stuff to come, um, which I could uh, talk more about, but. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. I, I love how exciting it is that we're actually experiencing the rebranding, like right now. And yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd love to talk about the rebranding because I think it's so important to have the name that is descriptive and also contains your values and it's easy mm -hmm. to pronounce it's just amazing that you're guys doing that now yeah three syllables good future it's kind of self like you know we want to create stuff that improves your chance at a good future and, and 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 focusing on the places where people already spend most of their time which is social media and video games right yeah and gamers a lot of entrepreneurs are gamers and a lot of gamers are entrepreneurs, so it goes both ways. Yeah. And I think it's amazing that you found that niche for kids as well, because a lot of uh, parents these days, they want their kids to experience entrepreneurship uh, one way or another, their courses, their games. So it's great that there is a game out there as well. Uh, so uh, I have another question for Toby just before he has to head out. Um, in terms of your previous entrepreneurial experiences, can you share some of them? And uh, what was the most valuable lesson that you would pass on to everyone and what you use these days as well? So it starts way back when I was four years old. I used to draw pictures on paper plates and then I'd go door to door to try to sell them. <laughs> and uh, Way back, I mean, I'm an old person. I'm turning 59 this month. Back in the 1970s, there used to be computer cards where you'd put all your cards together into a program, and then you'd run them through a machine. Yep. And after you got done with those cards, you didn't need them anymore. So I would fold those cards, staple them to a cardboard piece, spray paint them green, and put some yellow, yellow or some um, frills on it and sell it as Christmas wreaths. Uh, then <laughs> it goes on and on. I mean, tons and tons and tons of businesses. Um, and I'd say the biggest advice I have for starting a business is do it. I mean, you actually have to see the money and do it. Don't say, well, after I get a bunch of financing and after I do this and after I do that, then I'm going to, you know, have my business actually go out and do it even on a smaller scale. Uh, for example, uh, I'm an advisor with the Academy of Finance. Uh, they have a program where they're teaching entrepreneurs. And we have a contest for entrepreneurs of ready-made businesses versus in-stage businesses. And there was this business that these kids in high school developed these straws that decomposed. Great. That's so they had a bunch idea. of these straws. Mm -hmm. They went out to a local coffee shop and said, hey, do you want to buy these straws? They decompose. They're good for you. You can have them on the countertop. They'll cost an extra 10 cents or 20 cents to the consumer. And people that want to feel good about decomposing straws will buy them. 
And they did it right away rather than try to say, okay, we're going to have a multi-state rollout. We're going to have, have <laughs> factories in China and all this other stuff. They just did it and, and started yeah. producing revenue. So because then you can tell right away whether you're going to make money or not, because you can actually get money coming in and see what people like and tweak it and then keep on moving. And so for all my businesses, it was all just see the money right there and take it. So that's yeah. my advice on entrepreneurs. Uh, thank you so much for that. That's like uh, a, a offline version of RAD, right? The rapid application <laughs> development. You develop yeah. a product, you sell it right away. If it works, it works. If not, you got to tweak it. So, um, yeah. Well, I've got to yeah. run. It was nice thank chatting you so with you. Thank you so much, Toby. All right. Good Have seeing you, Chris. Great day. Take, Take care. care, Dad. See you. Bye. So now we have a conversation about uh, your apps, um, you know, the, the startup yeah. apps uh, that you're developing. Um, so you, you mentioned that you're going to have those characters that you drew off sort of this uh, famous yeah. entrepreneurs that you like. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're playing that, are they, they going to be available on all platforms? Uh, what's the vision yeah, the, from for how you're going to roll it out? So the goal is actually to get a working demo that is uh, free to download on iPhones and Android phones and, you know, have a working product that's not a complete game, but is a fun experience and gives people an idea of what a full game could be. Because talking about finance, my dad had enough money to bootstrap FIFA for Island and get it to the point where I'm taking over now um but now you know i've got some money but I, I need more funding and i'm gonna it's kind of like a meta thing where it's like i'm creating a game about startups that is a startup in itself that is trying to get funding to build <laughs> yeah. a you know get 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 the team in place like right now it's basically me my dad and two illustrators and then we have some interns um so we need we need a bigger team so but I, the vision for this demo is something, you know, it's going to be a 10, 15 minute experience um, on your phone, like a story driven kind of walking through a, a world and learning about startups. You're creating a startup on this like imaginary island, again, run by a bunch of chickens. And there's, there's cryptocurrencies and there's uh, NFTs. And uh, they, they need to like appease the chicken population by creating a startup to list as an IPO on the, the nest deck, which is run by this big queen chicken. And uh, so it's kind of, and, and if you listen to the podcast, you'd be laughing a lot because they talk about this kind of stuff and it's, it's really playing off the characters. Um, and they, they've said on their podcast, like they say that they they've opened it up to the fans. Like they want fans to create stuff, use their content, yeah. Like get get other people excited. So I'm hoping, I mean, it's, you know, maybe, I don't know if they're, they're not going to listen to this, but, you know, at some point they're going to figure out that somebody's making a game about them and then we're going to have a conversation and hopefully they green light it because it's just, it's just a free game that's trying to teach you about startups. I think they're going to like it and uh, they're billionaires. I don't think they care. Um, so, I love where yeah, we'll you're going with it. <laughs> Yeah, virality yeah. is the thing right yeah it's yeah exactly great. and it's like these guys uh, yeah. are viral right now they're they're going viral and uh it's um it's really exciting um maybe a little bit more about like my, my context right now is like i just moved to south korea with my wife um and we we've been married for three years we spent the pandemic in in america but mm -hmm. otherwise i've been like the last 10 years i've been living in other countries um teaching english i started in france um came to South Korea where I met my wife. Uh, and then we lived in China for a year in 2019 and had to leave early because of the pandemic breaking out there. Um, and so it's been this weird journey. You know, if it weren't for the pandemic, I'd probably still be teaching English. Um, you know, who knows where I'd be um, with, you know, with my wife somewhere. But um, yeah, we're happy to kind of be a fresh starting a new chapter in Seoul and, uh, all I need is good internet connection and Korea's got that. So <laughs> God, yeah, gosh, it's so interesting how the pandemic has really changed a lot of people's trajectory. And in your case, you know, it's lucky because I think this is something 
really cool and, and, and really good for your future. And for all of us who want to learn more about entrepreneurship and, you know, there's more direct way, which is sign up for a course, um, do a marathon with a, a, an entrepreneurial influencer, uh, or mm -hmm. also just spend time uh, learning about these things on podcasts and games and, and just have fun with it, which is really awesome. Yeah. You know, well, I love and, gamification. And, and I was going to mm -hmm. ask you about your uh, experience teaching English and, mm -hmm. for example, uh, Duolingo. I, lo mm -hmm. I love that app because it has implemented so many things that are crucial for uh, gamifying and really creating that addiction to learning. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you have that kind of concept building into your uh, new entrepreneurial game as well. Yeah, I mean, there's elements. We, I mean, that's one of the first things we did. We did about a month of research into game development and what makes a good game. And, you know, those, those reoccurring things that, like, you know, spark interests and make you want to come yeah. back and keep playing. I mean, you, you need to hit those things. So, you know, we're definitely uh, aiming to have that in our games. Um, you know, in Fifa for Island, uh, it's a really like interesting game. Like there's no other game like it. Like it's a role-playing game. So you're this character that's been dropped on this island and you have to go discover like where to go and how to save your village back home. And so there's all these tech stones uh, that you go to and then they teach you an economic concept. And then there's a multiple choice quiz. In order to unlock that tech, you need to complete a multiple choice quiz and test your knowledge on the economic topic. Like, uh, I mean, incentives, uh, opportunity cost, um, you know, marginal and an marginal benefit, marginal cost, things mm -hmm. like that. And there's 40 different concepts that uh, the player will learn as they go through this. So it's really perfect for high school. It's perfect for um, you know, any kid that's like yeah. likes video games and, and wants course. to learn about this and um so chris yeah. um i was wondering since you were talking about high school do you have uh sales that are like bulk sales uh corporate b2 b2b with yeah or certain yeah so it's you know as the marketing lead for this you know i've definitely learned a lot in that space and uh i i, I kind of realized early on that you know this game like who's gonna buy this game it's educators it's parents that are wanting it for their students or their kids more so than like a kid, you know, coming yeah, across this and be like, oh, I want to draw blocks, right? <laughs> yeah, I want to learn, you know, I want to play this game. No, so it's like, yeah, uh, targeting parents and educators uh, has, has been part of the goal. Um, it, and it proved to be, you know, a lot more difficult than you would think. Um, it's hard to get into the United States teaching sphere, but I, I do, we, we do have success stories. I, I went back to my high school and pitched the game to the two econ teachers there and they're using the game they're using the game in, in the class so it's pretty cool um and a lot of what you know so like this game uh fit for, for island and my dad's game mini games that are uh, free to play and he's working on distributing those like i i've like got this other thing which i think is going to draw more attention and then through that attention it's going to help out these other things we're doing so that's kind of been my focus the last two months um is building up this other thing uh which i think is it, it's actually making some pretty cool leaps and uh yeah we should have a follow-up interview in like a month or two because uh, what, maybe what a lot is this will other change. thing is something well, you're not so, going to share <laughs> well i can talk about it so okay. um good future educational games and media so what is the media part of it the media part of it is using social media to get across ideas and get across um, discussion topics and, and drawing attention on somebody's newsfeed. So TikTok is something that uh, half the world like thinks is like, oh, I'm never gonna use TikTok, but what's going on, the crazy. And then a billion active users a month use it every day because it is fun and it is uh, catchy and the algorithm just kind of picks stuff that you like but when you first go on TikTok, it's like, uh, this place is insane. Uh, there's just a lot of um, people doing stupid things, a lot of girls <laughs> dancing. A -A -D -D. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, it's just like, wait, I would never want my kid to, you know, play D on here. I won't want, you know, this is not promoting anything. It's just promoting diversion. You know, you're not really learning anything. You're just being entertained mindlessly. 
And I was like, this is like, I want to fight against that. And I want to provide snippets of interesting things. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this podcast that I love and I'm cutting it down to short clips and it's called the all, all in talk, all in talk. And, uh, you're actually the first podcaster that I'm, I'm like actually revealing this because like I've been working on it for two months now, gained uh, I'm at like sixty five thousand followers right now. So awesome. it's like grown sixty five thousand followers in the last two months. The 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 billionaires know about the account. They know that they just found out a week ago that it's me that's running the account. They don't know who I am really much yet. They haven't had time. They're busy people. Um, but they like greenlit it. They're like, wow, you're bringing. <laughs> You're bringing all these people to check out our stuff. And, so yep. thank you for your yep. time today. I really enjoyed all of your stories. And I'm sure a lot of people would love this honest conversation and uh, all the things that you shared. So, uh, you know, you should do more of these podcasts and, and get more people to uh, play. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to just end with, uh, so Jason Callum. Nakis is one of the four besties on the All In podcast, and his uh, motto is "Do the work, do the work." He's got like this uh, sign, neon sign behind him that says "Do the work." And uh, you know, just I ever since like I've just been in a very good mood lately. Like I haven't been playing video games myself much. You know, this kind of these diversions, and I've just been focusing on trying to add value and bring good things to the sphere because like social media is that's where discussions and conversations are having happening and you know podcasts are kind of the high end of of that sphere it's like that's where like that's where i feel like most like truth seekers are very yeah. happy to have uh been here and talk with you and i uh, you know i wish the best for uh, for you and your your podcast and your business as well all right 